So welcome back to my channel and to the somewhat noisy bunker. Sorry for the noise. Um, lockdown is coming to an end here in the UK and everybody's out because it's a beautiful day. Anyway, uh, welcome back to my channel and today I've got something I didn't really expect to be doing. Uh, I have in my hand here a copy of the revised edition of SPQR. The ancient rule lists from War Games. Uh, Warlord Games. Do we have a look? So first up, I want to say thank you to Jim from Reaper Games who sent me this copy um, of this revised edition uh, from Warlords. Um, Jim's a great supporter of the channel and also the Plastic Pla plastic crack podcast on the monday nights um and um you check out his i'll put a link here but there's a link to he does a fantastic sort of uh service for people selling um different sprues from different companies all combined into one sort of ready uh, box variety box uh, really good value really good thing and if you just need a few figures to play a skirmish game he's absolutely your man or you just need to add a few another unit to your formation uh, he's perfect and you, you know you want perries and you want to mix them with vitrix and you want to mix them with warlords have a chat with jim anyway enough of the advertorial um and he didn't ask me to do that but i just did that because i just thought he does a great thing and he did send this over to me for free so spqr now for those of you who don't know <laughs> this was a rule set that warlords brought out um I guess the sort of September time last year um, and to huge acclaim they've been talking about doing this for a while um, and it, it suddenly appeared out of the blue and I, have, I was one of many people who was incredibly excited about it I love ancient war games it's always been one of my big faves I don't play it very often anymore mainly because I don't find a rule set that I really want to play um Hellseas is great for big games but these were designed for sort of smaller scale battles sort of you know um small groups and clans and that sort of thing coming together but in my humble opinion and i've been very outspoken as have other people to be fair uh the old ones were a complete um wasted opportunity shall we say and i don't mind admitting i took that a little bit badly because i was so excited and i'd been away on holiday and i planned an army and i came back built this army and then played spqr and it was an absolute disaster so i'm wondering what these new rules are like whether they have uh, corrected the problems and kudos to warlords um they they obviously recognize that that things were wrong with the old edition um, because literally within a matter of days of this of the first edition coming out there was a FAQ on their website explaining things um, and they held their hands up they withdrew it um, well at least stopped selling it obviously and um, this year announced that there was going to be a revised edition and they did a, a very good thing I think they they offered um, if you bought a box of figures which could only be you know I think the smallest amount was 15 quid they would give you the new rules for free as a sort of sorry I guess they didn't say sorry but it was for a sorry um, now my humble opinion was the first set of rules were uh, ill uh, play tested they were rushed out because I think at the time they were worried about um, uh, infamy infamy coming out and also clash of spears and I think they wanted to get these out before those other rule sets hit the, uh, the street and it was a real shame because the book as with a lot of warlord books is really high quality um, unfortunately the gameplay was not so anyway let me find my old copy of the first edition and we'll have a look at what's changed and see whether we can extrapolate whether these things are going to be worth playing. So, uh, I have to go hunting. That's my bin. And there's the old set of rules. We'll keep the bin handy. I know that was a cheap trick, but I don't care. So, we've got here the old set. And here's the revised edition. Now, one thing I have noticed looking through this book, 
uh, the revised edition is that they haven't changed a huge amount but what they do seem to have changed and and please i don't claim to have found every change in this book so if you've seen anything different put a comment down below um i'd love to find things that i've missed and particularly things you think will make a big difference in the gameplay that's really what i'm intrigued by so my biggest issue I think many people's biggest issue with the original version of this game was the fact that um, combats were a complete mess. Um, you had a situation where the, the sort of Gallic warlord type characters were throwing buckets, and I mean buckets of, uh, of dice, and the poor old Roman had no chance. You had a situation where um, a unit unit would charge together and the combat made very little sense in terms of who actually fought. Uh, they hadn't sort of seemed to work through exactly who would fight when and it only got more and more complicated as more units joined into the fray. So if you had one unit hitting um, it was pretty stupid but it sort of worked and then but if another unit came in um it just all fell apart and then if a third unit came in it was just uh, just it was a mess and i'm hoping they've corrected that and i think from what i've seen there's a chance they have so let's have a look let's delve in let's delve in so i'm going to move oops, this is table set up from a, a zoom game the other night i haven't cleared it yet um so the re revised edition now First thing to say is this is not a complete rewrite of the rules. Um, they have amended bits, they've added bits, they've, I think, taken bits away, but basically this is the same book. It's the same high quality pictures. Um, they've sometimes moved sections around slightly, but on the whole, there isn't an awful lot of difference in the thing. You've still got all the scenarios, you've got the army lists, blah de blah de blah but there's some nice little additions and it starts at the right at the beginning so inside the new front cover you've got a quick reference sheet and i like that um that was a miss i think on the old one uh, on the old one you just had some pretty pictures which was lovely um but in this new one there's a quick reference sheet and, and that's great the other thing they've done which i think is really good as well on the back sheet they've taken advantage of the back page so they used to have the quick reference there but here they've now got a warband record sheet and that also is kind of useful you can photocopy that uh, being on the back page but uh, inside back page that's a lot easier to photocopy than it is when in the front and it says permission to photocopy for personal use only so that's good i like that now i'm going to try as i say i don't claim to have found every change there is in these rules because i haven't gone through every little section of it but i've tried to compare page with page and see where obvious changes have happened now early on none of the first few pages really change it's basically the same game um and nothing in the basing seems to have changed at all nothing in the so all through this early stages nothing much really changes which is a bit of a shame, really. I thought the um, one of my complaints, um, which is probably more my fault than, than the rules fault, uh, when I played this down at my club, uh, one of the problems I had was because it's a, um, I go, then the opponent goes sort of scenario. So you, put, you move your entire army and then they move their entire army and do their actions. Because there's multiple actions within the game, um, you kind of feel sometimes if you, you're just sitting there waiting, waiting to be punched. And one of the changes we did um, is we did uh, pulled out uh, dice, action, action dice, like you get in bolt action. Um, and I think that kind of worked quite well. But they haven't changed the system. It looks like everybody does. Um, yeah. One player will move and fight and then move on with all their units um, and then move to the second player which as I say is a little bit of a shame but you know that if you're playing with a smaller army that's probably not such a big issue uh, we were playing quite big forces 
So nothing much has changed here at all in the first nine, ten pages. So this looks like the first place where things have changed. So the first sort of uh, cosmetic change in the rule book is around the shooting actions and it is cosmetic they've just literally moved sections around the the process seems to work pretty much the same i can't really see any significance they've just tightened up the language like um in the ranging attack details they they make it very clear that once you fired the the person hit takes an armor save whereas over here on the old rules it was sort of in a different section of the book of the same page it was still all there so that hasn't really changed i don't see anything significant in terms of any of the shooting actions there that makes any difference at all so we're moving on we're on to page 12 and again not a huge amount of, of change now actually no this is where we start to see some changes so on page 12 of the old rule book this is the melee action section and it says to make an attack go through the following steps every model in both the attacking unit and the enemy unit make a melee check with each melee dice it possesses every score of six is is uh, successful every score of one is not so they've changed that which i think addresses one of the issues that i had with these rules so now the rule says for both units every model that's in base contact with the enemy unit and only those models in base con contact contribute their melee dice and create melee pull so no longer did you have the situation where two units would come together and only one or two figures had touched but the whole lot of both sides fought and then another unit came in the flank and then again the whole unit of the defender so best if i show this with some figures carthaginian infantry so imagine that's one unit well it is a unit there's another unit coming in here now they we measure their contact they're, unfortunately these are multi-based but it does you get the point um and they connect like that because that's as far as this unit can move no further now what would happen in the old rules was you would count both these units so 12 figures against 12 figures now in the new rules you'll only count the ones in contact so it's probably just these four figures would fight now why that's important is then if in a second turn or in the same turn even another unit came in and hit this unit in the flank what was happening in the old rules was you were getting all your dice for this unit against that unit then this unit would come in and this defending unit would get all its dice again against them and that, that just didn't apply so the way it will work now is if we've got the combat going on like that say that is the situation you've got your three against three or six against six depending on the weapon type and then on the flank here this guy because he's been hit in the flank will only get two figures here Oops, standards bent against two or four depending on what's coming in here and that's a far better way of doing things and i like that so full marks for them correcting that we we house ruled that because that was the only way we could you know put up with that kind of situation and i say partly that was our problem because we were fighting big games and you had a lot of units and multiple combats were going on all over the place so that's good i like that um so they've actually clarified it as well um because in the old rules it said in multiple combats um uh each fight is conducted using the normal rules with each un unit performing its actions separately um which is kind of which was kind of what led to all these problems so in these rules and the new rules they say um when this when multiple combats occur all models in base contact with different units create separate melee dice pools to roll against each separate unit so you you fight them individually basically if an individual model is in base contact with two or more models from separate enemy units then the player has to decide which one he wants to contribute to um, if he has multiple melee dice then he can separate them put some on one and some on other that's all perfectly reasonable and i i think that's resolves that problem for me so i'm pleased to see that 
let's move on. I mean, so this section has changed a bit, but most of the rules haven't changed from what I can see, apart from that really crucial thing. So then we're into scenarios. I'm not going to bother looking at the difference in the scenarios because, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll, you work them through, and I wouldn't imagine they've changed hugely. Let's move into the uh, advanced rules. So a lot of things have moved around here um, within these rules within this page. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean much has changed significantly. Um, I think they've clarified some of the hero rules. So um, basically, I think because of the way they want to get around this, you know, actually the figure fighting is the one that's fighting. So it's really important that where your where your hero is positioned in that first melee. Um, in fact, they don't even include this in this section. So they've obviously put this in separately. Maybe there's a section on heroes. I remember there was something on heroes, but they seem to have uh, basically updated it and made it very clear where heroes fit, um, which, which is good as well. Moving on in the advanced rules. Again, not an awful lot of changes. There's a change to large units clarification so in the new rules um, for as long as a unit has 10 or more models in it including any heroes uh, they're considered large and receive the following benefits plus one to their melee checks plus one modifier to any will to fight checks now in the old rules uh, it didn't tell you um how what a clarification with a large rule is so a large unit was so that's good um i think that's all good again there isn't a huge amount changed some of the pictures have changed here for sure but not an awful lot that i can see that actually has significantly changed the game um i don't think on the we weapon traits they've changed anything they again correct me if you've seen something different when you've been looking at these rules if you get your hands on them but i can't see an awful lot difference in the actual weapons themselves phalanxes that looks a straight for straight they haven't changed those significantly um on that first page at least so this is where things like phalanxes come into their own because we have a situation in now with the rules where not every figure fights a phalanx becomes even or a, a a unit with long weapons becomes even more important so it says here during a melee action a phalanx is not required to move as many models as possible into base contact with the enemy uh, as other units do the strength of the phalanx comes as part of a tight formation instead as long as at least one model is in base contact all models in the front rank are considered to be in base contact and contribute their melee dice in addition, if the phalanx is armed with long or very long weapons and is charged by cavalry uh, in the front faces, fencing, these weapons gain the lethal special ability against cavalry. So I think that's good. Um, but I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Now what they have done to sort of lessen the impact, which I kind of think as well with the, with the phalanx is a good thing. In the old rules, you used to get minus one uh to all ranging and melee attacks against the front of a phalanx now it is only melee uh, so there's no ranging bonus which is uh, so basically the idea i think they were sort of trying to show that you know a wall of pike um would stop missiles they'd bounce off the pikes um which sort of is okay but it's a bit a bit unrealistic so i kind of like that they've done that um also in the old rules you had a unit uh, in a phalanx gains a plus one bonus to all armor checks made against all attacks um in the enemy forward facing and they've done away with that so you know i think that's good and in fact they've made hitting a phalanx even easier i've just noticed a phalanx uh, may make a shooting action as normal but only target units in its front facing however phalanx make a very good target as tightly packed troops cannot avoid incoming missiles easily so a unit making a shooting action against a phalanx gains plus one bonus to its ranging attacks in addition phalanx can only use its shields against attacks originating from its front facing so again i think that's a good thing i think that makes um 
um, a good addition to the rules. So not only do they lose their minus one, because it was weird, it, it actually, sorry, correct that, that rule was already sort of there already, it was writ written slightly differently. So it was weird that you got a plus one to hit a phalanx, but then you lost one because of the fact they had the big pikes. So that's kind of corrected. Now it's just, there's a positive for hitting a phalanx because they're a big unit to hit. They're very closely packed, much easier to hit. So good clarification, I think. That was a mistake in the rules. Um, slight changes on equipment here. Um, so in the new rules, short spears have the reach special rule and swords no longer have the parry special rules. And actually that's fairly significant. So, which I, again, I like. One of the problems I had was that you'd be fighting, um, say you had your, your troops smashing at each other here. Um, troops like this have got big shields and swords. And so they'd get parry for a big shield and a parry for a sword. So you'd like get five hits and then they get eight. Uh, parries back and that kind of seemed a bit daft so they've done away with the sword uh, parry which I like as well so also you know a short spear has reach um, it may be it may not be a pike but pike are very long a long spear is long so a short spear has reach and, and that's a good thing too so full marks I think they've clarified those rules quite well so some changes here around Pelham uh, for the Romans. Um, I, I don't know how significant these are because I haven't played much with Romans myself. Um, they still have the fact they can only be used once in the game per battle. The way Pelums still work is that they're effectively a reaction to a charge. So when you have Pelum and you're charged by an enemy unit, one of the following activities or actions happen as a result of um, the, the defender throwing Pelum. Um, the unit using Pelum makes an immediate ranging attack against the attacking unit, as described on page 10, with additional minus one modifier to their ranging check. The attacking, uh, sorry, the acting unit is no longer to be considered charging and receives none of the benefits of chargings like lethal bonuses or effects of wild charge. So that's huge. Uh, that gives the um, uh, Roman player a significant ad advantage against the hairy ass barbarians, which is good. And for this melee action, for every su subsequent melee action, the acting unit is locked in combat. Uh, the acting unit cannot use any shields, uh, and the acting unit regains the use of the shields once they're no longer locked in combat. So what happens is because the Pelum has thudded into all the shields, they can no longer use the shields. So not only do the Barbarians lose their wild charge going in, but because they can't parry with their shields. And remember, there's no parry on swords either. So that actually gives the, the Legionaries a significant boost in their capability. Um, and much like I don't really like Romans very much, that um, actually is a good thing. So we'll keep going. Um, don't think anything much here has changed within Heroes campaign. I haven't even checked whether there's any significant changes because um, I'd never actually got around to that. Scenarios, likewise, I haven't really looked at that. Now, there's a few um, odds and ends around the talents. So, if you remember, within the rules, um, you can give commanders or uh, heroes special talents there's a number of them depending on which line you want to go through and if you're playing the campaign you can um y you can get more talents as you get more experienced and better in the field and they've done a few changes around like um precision shot is now the the number one uh, talent for the archer of legend setup whereas it used to be number two on the old rules but i'm not going to go into any of these some of them may be fairly significant some less so um i don't have that much experience of them so i'm not going to comment but there are just a few little changes some of them have moved around a little bit so if you've got an existing spqr uh, hero army um you might want to just check that you can actually use that talent that you've given it um, at the moment because it may be it's moved um now 
So that's really the main changes um, in terms of the rules that I've seen. As you see, not significant, but I think hopefully just enough to change things. Now, the things that have potentially significant changes are actually in the army lists. Um, and again, I'm, I'm sure I've missed some of these. Um, so, you know, correct me if you've seen anything, but some of these are actually pretty substantial. So there's a number of these have changed significantly and I think they will have a quite a considerable impact on the gameplay, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So first up, Athenians, cavalry, um, they lose a, a melee dice. In the old rules, they had two melee dice per figure. Now they've only got one. They've also gone up in points. There are now 19 denarii as opposed to 18. Now, a number of the um, other costs have changed. So uh, purchasing a horse, for instance, for your hero has gone down to 20 from 40, which I think is good. Purchasing uh, javelins has gone up. Uh, three javelins for a hero is four denarii now, whereas it used to be two. Sling is eight, whereas it used to be five. So there's a number of those sort of changes that have happened. On the on the converse, the cavalry's cuirass. If you want to put a cuirass on the cavalryman, uh, it only costs seven, where it used to cost ten. Um, the shields, have, uh, swords have gone down in price because they're no longer parrying, so they're not as quite as effective. So they used to be three, they're now two for these cavalry. So you can see there's a number of little tweaks around <coughs> costs, which I think could play out. And you'll have to check yourself all the way through. Uh, large shields has changed with these heroes. Quite significant change for uh, some of the armor capability. You know, so you'll need to look through them individually, case by case. Hoplites, um, Athenian hoplites used to get two melee dice. They now only get one. Their point costs have gone up to 14 from 12. Um, conversely, the, purchase, the price of a cuirass has gone down from 10 to 7. Um, helmets have gone up from te 2 to 3. So, it, you know, arrow aprons for the front of the shields up from 1 to 2. Um, if you want a sword, it, uh, it's for now uh, if you want to replace your spears with swords, it's free, whereas it used to cost. So lots of different things like that. Archers are cheaper in the new book. They're only seven, whereas they were ten previously. Um, however, actually, no, the cost uh, is slightly cheaper to buy a sword as well for them. Um, they can put... Uh, leather is three denarii, so leather's gone up from two to three. So, but they can wear helmets and leather, whereas in previously they can only one one or the other. Peltasts again, cost has gone up from seven to ten. Uh, nothing much else. Maybe some changes around the equipment. I'm not going to go through every single one of those. Pasiloi gone up again from four to six points. Biggest changes are actually in all the heroes. So, um, uh, Cleon um, is, has dropped from 220 to 182 points. Um, his stats haven't really changed, um, and actually his equipment hasn't either. So, you know, it's just a straight reduction in the cost of the heroes, which I think is a good thing, because some of the heroes were ridiculously expensive, and you could almost buy a unit of troops for one hero. So now there'll probably be more heroes in the game, which, you know, maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing. Plays to maybe some of Warlord's clientele of, um, uh, of more fantasy-based uh, players, or players coming to the to the historical side from a more fantasy-type side. Uh, Thermocles. <laughs> I can't say it. He's dropped from 150 points to 97 points. I mean, that's a massive, massive change. So, again, you'll need to look through whatever your um, army of choice is uh, to see what has changed. But all the points and some of the stats have changed. Here you go. The Britons, the hero's cheaper. He's 40, whereas he was 45. The Druid is 45, whereas he was 75 previously. Um, the chariots, uh, they've lost a melee dice. They used to have three, then they've got two. They're also an agility of zero, whereas they were at minus one before. Same price, um, but costs have changed that way. Uh, horsemen, uh, gone up slightly in, in, in unit cost, 
21 from 20, but they've lost the melee dice. So they seem to have removed all the guys that had two melee dice. Everything seems infantry standard troops seem to have just one melee dice now, which I think is, is really, uh, really important. So tribesmen have changed, warriors have changed on the number of dice. They've also changed on cost. They've gone up largely. Um, the heroes, um, oh, where's heroes? Boudicca, again, come down. She's 57 now, as she was 95 previously. Uh, Caraticus is 123, whereas he was 200 before. You know, you could see that that would be worth fielding now. Whereas 200 points, if you're only playing 500 points, <laughs> that's a large chunk of change. Now let's get on to the Romans, because I know pff, <coughs> people love the Romans. Um, and one of the big complaints I heard about Romans uh, was that they just, you know, you'd have like 10 figures against 200 ghouls. They'd throw 300 dice, slight exaggeration, and the Romans would all die without any real chance. So what have they done with the Romans? Ah, so um, the Roman heroes have dropped in price, 40 from 50. Um, their armor costs have gone up, however, well, actually the cuirass has gone down, but the shield's gone up. Chainmail's gone down, Pelham's gone up, so different things there. Roman cavalry, they have also had the nerf in terms of melee dice, so only plus one, but and they've gone up in cost. They cost 30, where, uh, whereas they were 28. They've also lost their armour, they've gone plus three, whereas they were plus four initially. That's interesting. So Roman cavalry are nowhere near as good as they were. Uh, Roman legionaries, same cost, 24 points. But likewise, they've lost their melee dice down to just one. Okay, interesting. Uh, Pelham is the same price. Slingers are the same price. No, slings have gone up. I never agree with legionaries using slings. Shouldn't be allowed. Uh, how would you stand shoulder to shoulder and whir a sling around? Just, no, you wouldn't. Um, standards have dropped considerably. They obviously don't think standards are worth the money that they were charging. So a legionary standard was 25 points before. Now it's five. So that's a significant change. So legionaries haven't actually changed. Not I mean, apart from they're getting everybody's got this melee dice change, which again I think is a good thing. There were far too many dice. But then also you're all losing parries because most troops had swords and they don't have them anymore. Or don't have parries with swords. So that's that's kind of interesting. Uh, Scorpion uh, Scorpio team is down in points, 74 points from 80. Again loses a melee dice for the crew member but considerably better armour on the machine itself. A plus four, whereas it was plus one, but it'll only take three wounds, whereas it previously took four. So, yeah, up and down. Uh, Caesar, he's only 159 points now, whereas he was 180. Their armor, His armour's gone up, though. He's plus four armour, whereas he was plus three. It's not, not significant change I'm seeing there in the Romans, uh, but maybe it's because everything else has changed around it. All the other costs have gone up, whereas the Romans have stayed roughly the same. Uh, Pompey, 103 points, whereas he was 130 previously. Um, Marcus Crassus, wow, 120 now, whereas he was 225 previously. That's wow, that's a big change. Um, Mark Antony, 89, where he was 175. Again, a massive change. So I think while the legionaries are pretty much the same, haven't changed much, they've just got the melee change, um, the heroes for that army have gone down considerably, which Roman players, you may like that. I don't know. So I say, I'm not going to go through everything. I want to get through to the... Um, um, Spartans, Sparta, because Sparta was one of the rules. I think one of the um, armies that people thought were overly strong, um, which will annoy people if you've all gone off and bought Sparta. Now, personally, I love the Sparta. I think the Spartan race generally is fascinating. Um, you know, a militaristic society um, in the age of uh, of the ancients. I think it's uh, interesting. But um, I know they were a little bit strong. So right at the bat, the hero uh, has dropped in price. He's 58, whereas he was 70 before. He's lost a wound. He's uh, had three, and he's now on two. 
Um, bravery has also gone down. He had four. He's now three. Um, agility's gone down. He was on. He was on three. He's now on two. Um, some of the armor costs have changed as well. You can get a cuirass a lot cheaper now. Uh, from ten points, it's now four points. So you know. Mm. The hoplite itself, and I think this is the one that most people will be interested in. So, um, melee plus one still. Melee dice, like everybody else, down to just one dice now. Uh, agility plus one, bravery plus three, armor plus two. Wounds are only one. So in the old system, they had two wounds. So a, a Spartan, Spartan um, hoplite was hard to kill. Really hard to kill. Um, and therefore they um, they stuck around because they had two wounds so you'd have to hit them <laughs> hit them twice before they went down they're now like more normal humans which is intriguing now also they have removed the fearsome reputation rule oh no they've added it okay sorry they've added I'm confusing my books so instead of having that they have a special rule which is called fearsome reputation the fighting prowess of this unit is legendary each uh, such is their reputation that other lesser men fear fighting them uh, which risks become a self-fulfilling prophecy during the first melee action that initiates a close combat any enemy models in base contact with this unit receives a minus one modifier for their melee check however while locked in combat, this modifier doesn't apply to any subsequent actions. Additionally, if the enemy unit also has fearsome reputation, it never suffers the minus. So, yeah, I like that because the, there is a lot of evidence um, through history. If you read some of the, you know, when people saw the Spartan hoplites, they didn't want to go up against them. Uh, there weren't many that did. And so that kind of negates or sort of so you you lose that stupid rule of two wounds but you gain on a certain degree of um uh, strength in the first round of combat but only first round of combat that's good uh what else we got uh pericote uh hoplites they've gone up in price oh yeah did the price of the uh hoplites uh, spartan hoplites they went up by two points so you lose a wound uh, but they cost two more points, so they're 26 points as opposed to 24. Uh, their secondary hoplites also go up, they're 15 from 12. Uh, doesn't look like there's any, they've lost the usual melee dice that everybody seems to have lost. Um, only one wound again, so which is what they had previously, so nothing much has changed that. Helots. have uh, gone up again a point, they're four points, whereas they were three previously. Uh, their heroes uh, actually stay the same. Uh, he's gone up to, he's still 70, which is what he was before. Leonardis has dropped by 100 points. He was 270 points, he's now 170 points. Ranging attack melee, he's got the same number of dice there. Bravery's the same, armor's. Yeah, but he hasn't changed in terms of uh, capability, but he's 100 points cheaper going to be a lot more heroes in this game that's all i can say so i think um i'm not as i'm not going to go through every single army list um and you can see there's not significant changes they're tweaks around the edges i think the most interesting changes around some of the pointing of the game and we won't really know about how good that is until it plays a game um but i think the signs are positive um i like They've clarified the combat system a bit better. I like that there's not going to be as many dice rolling around because, you know, whereas everybody had two attack dice, now they're only going to have one um, on the whole. That's good. Um, I think it sounds like the changes to the Pelum rule will make a significant difference to the legionaries dealing with the hairy ass barbarians. The, certainly the combat clarification, so it is units touching. Or figures touching um, will make a big difference but by the same token you'll have to make sure that your opponent uh, has a very similar basing scheme as you because that could create some problems but hey that's for you to work through but I think overall it looks promising we can consign that back to the bin um, and I think thumbs up ish
for these new revised rules. Um, I'm intrigued to give them a go. Um, if I can persuade anybody that I dragged down the club to play it, um, <laughs> if they're not, they're not once bitten, twice shy. Um, but I think these have got potential. Definitely got potential. Um, and thank you again for Jim uh, from Reaper Games for sending it in to me. Uh, really appreciate that, mate. Thank you so much indeed. And well done to Warlords for recognising that you copped up and uh, correcting it. Um, or at least trying to correct it. Proof of the pudding will come in the eating when we get to play the game um, and actually draw swords over the tabletop with these rules. But I think potentially they've got something um, in them still. Um, so I'm kind of quietly positive about it. <laughs> is, that, is that a damning praise? I'm not sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look through. Uh, as I said, I don't claim to have found every change there is in the rules, and I'm sure there's a couple more that I've missed. Certainly, I haven't gone through every single point change that there is within the army lists. Um, still no Carthaginians in there, which is a shame. Um, but I guess if this one takes off, there'll be another supplement coming along fairly soon afterwards. Such is the way of it. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you've seen anything else that I've missed. Um, are you did you love spqr to begin with um and a bit scared about these changes or did you like me want to play spqr um but uh, hated the rules so much you wouldn't go back to them and would these revised rules make you think twice and actually have another go at them let me know in the comments down below i'll also put a link to warlord's site where you can um, get hold of the rule sets um, just via a little affiliate link. I'll also put the link to um, uh, Jim's uh, Reaper Games uh, site. So if you want to go and have a look at what he does in terms of the sprue sets he gives out or he, he sells, um, go and have a look. But uh, in the meantime, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the notification button and make some comments down below preferably polite ones, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.